welcome. Try to set up a sofa chat to do this a second. Good morning. It's a little early. Well, not for you guys on the East Coast, I guess. But I have no children with me, so. Okay, well, of course, I can't get the soap and set to work. I never can get it to work. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Okay, 24 hours. Life of Fred. Yes, we love Life of Fred. Okay. I was going to cheat and have the scoper chat up and then figure out how to go there, but I can't have the scoper chat to work. I don't know. It doesn't like me for some reason. Hi. My name is Michelle, and I didn't actually see who all was coming in, so I'm sorry if I didn't say your name and welcome you. Um, I'm a mom of three, homeschool mom of two, and my oldest is in... Um, college, well, not really college, he's in dual enrollment, and I blog over at hidethechocolate.com, and so everything I mentioned today will be over there, and um, so I was going to talk about math today, and several people have already done the Broscope Challenge and have talked about math, so if you are one of those, and I don't mention you, I'm sorry. I went through trying to remember everybody, but it's the end of the week, so I couldn't find everybody. But some of the ones were, um, actually, Christina did not blog about it, but she has blogged about some of the things I've talked about many times. So, um, Nurtured Roots, Angela did yesterday, and she talked about a lot of the games, so I won't go into detail about the games. Uh, Legacy Trickers, Amber, um, Alicia Hutchison talked about a cool game that we don't have, um, a nest full of... Squishers. Andy, I think, talked about some. And uh, Mary talked about some things on Not Before Seven. That's all I can remember. I think maybe Kristen did one. And I just, I don't really remember. Sorry. Um, so, a little about me. Uh, the reason why I want to tell you a little about me is because my life has revolved around math. I graduated from college with an accounting degree, got my CPA, became a CFO, um, went from there to accidentally kind of falling into teaching high school math at a local Christian school when my son started school. I wanted to kind of do the same thing with the schedule with him and be at the same school with him. So that's what I did and kind of accidentally got into that. I hope y'all can see me. I didn't realize the light is kind of bad. I'm not good like Julie and have all my diva lights and everything. Um, so I just wanted to let you know a little bit of my background because my life has revolved around a lot of math and when I taught math in high school I used Saxon math because that's what we had and everybody said that is great it's a regular rigorous math pro program and I agree it was rigorous it was tough it was you know you were going to push out students who had really really were supposed to know their stuff and I spent a lot of time explaining to parents why we had 30 problems a night and because it was a spiral program, you had to do 30 problems a night. And it was exhausting on that end. So, of course, when I went to teaching um, at home, I grabbed the Saxon book because that's what I was used to doing. And I tried to teach my high school son Saxon math. And, oh, that did not work well. Uh, he was not responding well to it. He was mad at me all the time. Uh, we pretty much fought all the time. I see a lot of you are going in and out. Are, is the connection bad or is it just, is it me or is it your connection? Let me know if it's bad and I can always start and stop again. Um, is it is the problem with me? I, I know he's going four, five, seven, but then again, maybe it's just Periscope because it's weird sometimes. It tells me I have no viewers and I do. Okay, all right, good. So hopefully it's not my Wi-Fi because sometimes that can get a little messy. Okay, so I went and started school with Saxon for my oldest. My youngest were first grade and fourth grade. And we went with Horizons because Horizons was um, like Saxon, spiral, but it looked more fun, like it had more colorful things. And the first grader was fine because she had a little 
tiny worksheets she would do and it was pretty easy for her. The fourth grader had a stressful year before that in school and she did not do well with it. She, there was a lot of problems. In fact, it'd be like four worksheets problems a day. Oh yeah, there were, it's just tears because Saxon, you have to do 30 problems or more a night. It's not an option because it's spiral. So if you don't do them all, you're missing things. Or then mom has to sit there and hunt out everything that you need to know. Or if you've got a concept covered, you, have to, you can skip that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's exhausting, it's frustrating, but the way the program works is you're supposed to do it all. So this is what I tell my students, you have to do it all. If you don't do it all, then you're gonna miss something. And when it comes time to the test, because it's a spiral test, you're gonna have a problem. Well, this didn't go over well with my children. Um, like I said, my daughter was a little traumatized. Hey, Heather. Um, anyway, from being in this private school setting where it was such a, yeah, just have the problems here. I'm telling you, my daughter would sit down to do math and she would fall apart in tears. I'm not talking about a little bit of, oh, you know, the whiny stuff, I don't want to do this because she's all that's that. I'm talking about meltdown, crying, laying on the floor, flopping all over the table. Um, just, it was miserable. And then by the end of it, I'm yelling and screaming. Um, yeah, it's not worth it. It wasn't worth it. By nine weeks into this, I decided, okay, and by the way, I'm having to grade all this stuff at the end. Because again, I was a school teacher, so you know, you have to do this, you have to grade, you have to take tests. That was the whole traditional mindset that was really hard to get away from. So, if she's, she's crying, yeah, well, hopefully I can help you out there. <laughs> she's crying every night. Uh, I'm crying every night when I'm grading everything. I'm talking to her father, he's saying, you know, maybe this homeschool thing isn't what it's cracked up to be. Maybe you need to put them back in the school. And I'm saying, you know, yeah, maybe that's the case. I I'm totally doubting myself, um, even though I know I've taught math for years, so surely I can handle this. Um, elementary math, I've taught calculus for heaven's sakes. Uh, my son oldest, not speaking to me. I mean, at the one point, my husband says to me, you need to put him into the high school full time because you're going to have a bad relationship with him. You're not going to be able to talk to him anymore because you guys hate each other every day when it comes to teaching him Saxon and him doing his stuff. So, all that, <laughs> not good. So I decided that's not going to work. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, what's your name again? Because I can't get the Scober chat up and I can't remember everybody's little t uh, handles. But I'm glad I'm speaking to you. <laughs> um, we... At nine weeks, decided, oh, Carrie, that's right, I knew that, sorry. Um, we decided in nine weeks, this is enough is enough. I said, okay, if we're going to do this homeschooling thing, which I really wanted to do because I was spending 18 hours a day lesson planning and teaching and student council and senior trip advisor, yeah, it is hard. And I'll, I'm going to talk about fractions in a minute, too. And I was doing all this stuff at the school, so I wanted to be with my kids and spend all that time lesson planning for them and working with them and educating them instead of somebody else's kid. Not that I didn't love those kids, because I did, and I still keep up with all my former students, but I wanted to be with my kids. So I thought, I have to make this work. So I started researching other ways to teach math, and then we came up with Life of Fred, which you saw in the beginning. And this is just the first book, Life of Fred, Apples. And this is not a curriculum for everyone. If you, if your child likes worksheets, if your child likes doing rote problems and enjoys memorization, oh, you're welcome, and enjoys the fun of just solving a problem. And there are those out there. My youngest is that one. She likes her worksheet. She likes to be able to answer her problems. She likes to get done and check it off. That is her. My middle child, no, she does not want that. She wants to enjoy it, she loves to read, so this is perfect for her. If you go into it, it has, every book has 18 chapters. How oh, good. Now, a lot of people use this as a supplement, and they don't use it as a full curriculum. And I'll tell you about how we use it in just a minute. Um, it has 18 chapters. You read the chapter, which a lot of times will, yeah, I'll tell you about in a minute. Uh, a lot of times will be um, not really a whole lot about math, but this one is, it talks about pencils, and if you have three pencils and four pencils, it's seven. If you have five pencils and two pencils, it's seven, so on and so forth. Yeah, a lot of people don't think it's enough, and I'll explain that in just a second. At the end, it has a, your time to play, and you have to be careful because on the next page, here's the answers to the, your time to play. So, your turn to play, sorry. 
So if your children are not good about doing it without checking answers, you, you may have to watch them. And my oldest did try to skip through some stuff, and I had to, at one of my oldest, my middle child, had to get on with her. Yeah, and so the difference was, it was a huge breath of fresh air. I'm not saying Saxon's a bad program. Saxon is a good program. It's a rigorous program. If you have a math kid, it is great. I enjoyed Saxon when I was teaching it, but it does have an element of boring. Um, it, if you have a child who is um, not math, maybe, or not, or once is a more of a free thinker like mine, yeah, then you do need something that's a little more lively. So what we did is we started out with Life of Fred. And the oldest, we started both of them on apples. My oldest, I, he went to algebra. Actually, I started him in the beginning of algebra because he'd already algebra one. Because Dr. Smith, he introduces topics in a very non-traditional way. Yeah, it is solid, Heather. I will say that. It's just boring. Um, I mean, I taught it for years. Um, this, he teaches in such a non-traditional way, it's really hard to just jump in in the middle. Um, so even though my oldest had had Algebra 1, I had him go back and do it kind of as a review for beginning Algebra and then Advanced Algebra. Now, on Life of Fred, my, both of my children started Apples. Now, my oldest, she was already multiplying, so she just starts going right through them. She finished Apples in like a day or two. And then she moved on ahead. She got three or four books ahead of the youngest. The youngest, we just did one chapter a day because she was just learning to read, and she wanted to read it to me. She didn't want me reading it to her. And so that's what we did, and we did the Your Turn to Play. But the math teacher and me said, oh, my goodness, this is not enough math. This is, we, we've got to add more. So I started doing little worksheets that at the end. And my, like I said, my youngest loved that. My middle child said, eh, I don't want to get worksheets. So I had to start revolving around. Now, my husband, on the other hand, said, oh, this does not look like a legit math thing. And, of course, he has had, like, 20-something years of school. And he's in an industry where he gets tested all the time. So he said, I don't think they're going to do well on state testing. And we have state tests every year. And I said, well, you're probably right. They're not going to do well on state testing because the concepts are introduced in a very different way than what they would be if they were in the school system. So... He, uh, we found Matthew C, and we added Matthew C to that. And I don't do the full Matthew C. They watch the video, and they do a couple of the worksheets and maybe the test at the end just to see that they got the concept. Matthew C's things are really short, really kind of simple, and it's easy for them to go right through it. The oldest does not care for that, but as I said, the youngest loves it. Okay, so about is this enough of curriculum? In the elementary, he suggests... Um, that you go back and read these books again after you finish them. Now, for some children, I think that would work well. I don't know that my kids are going to do that. In fact, I know my oldest one would totally freak out if I said to her, oh, you have to go back and read the book that you've already read. She's just not going to do it. She's going to throw a little hissy. So, I said, so instead of doing that, that's why I've supplemented. I don't think you have to if you're going to read the books more than once. Um, but for us, I just don't see my children doing that. Um, so what we did is we added the Matthew C into it. And then I only do a chapter a day of this. And with the youngest, that means that she, um, she only does like three books a year. The other one has had to catch up because she started from apples too. Now, when you get to fractions, which is what my middle child is about to start, this is a quite a lengthy book. And it has, instead of your turn to play, well, I guess it does. It has, it does have your turn to play. But after so many chapters, I'm trying to find one, it has bridges. Here's a bridge. So it's kind of like little mini test. If you take the first bridge and you get like 9 out of 10 right, then you can move on. Otherwise, you need to take the next bridge and so on and so forth. And she got At this point, because there's so many more chapters, I think it becomes a full program. Um, a full curriculum and fractions, then it goes decimals and percents, and I think then it gets into the pre-algebra and algebra. I know when we got to the algebra books, it is definitely a full program because my son did that, and it took him all year. Now, granted, he was doubling up on the beginning um, algebra and then he went into the advanced, but I think it would definitely have been a full year curriculum. With the elementary series, which goes from, um, they don't really have grade levels. This. If you start with apples, you could start that in kindergarten. Um, 
and it goes all the way through your mine shaft. This, they say, is kind of a middle school age, but it kind of depends on where your child is. I would suggest anybody that's elementary start with apples. And even if you just read through quickly and answer the questions quickly, that's fine because he's going to mention things like cardinal and ordinal, ordinal numbers. He's going to mention community property, and not every subject will talk about some of that. Yeah, um, Saxon algebra, that's what the the crying, I'm not crying, but he wouldn't speak to me when we were doing that. I mean, it was bad. My husband was really saying, we need to get rid of this or you need to put him back in school on that one. That didn't go well. But I think that if you're going to start with apples, and if your child is maybe fourth grade or fifth grade or something like that, then just start with apples and you'll be, have a full curriculum. Because by the time they get all the way through mine shaft, which some people say you don't have to do kidneys, liver, and mine shaft because it's more review, but I don't know. I'm going to keep going. Um then I think you'll have a full curriculum. If you're starting in kindergarten, then you'll probably have to add some things to it. So when mine started in first grade, I have to add things to hers. Like I said, we do Matthew C. I, Matthew C is better than Saxon. I'm not completely crazy about Matthew C, but it does have manipulatives, which my daughter likes, and it's quick and easy for them. It's an easy thing just to kind of rehash and review things. I like the fact that he stays on one topic so you have the whole addition, then you have all subtraction, then you have all multiplication and division. Yes, I would definitely say start with apples because of the topics he mentions. He will even mention sigma notation, um, which is something I never taught until pre-calculus. Yeah, Matthew C., I'm not sure. And he mentions a lot of things that, I know I have a friend who just started her children in, uh, I think it's liver and maybe fractions, and she's saying she's having a hard time keeping up because it seems like there are things that she's supposed to know she doesn't or terminology she doesn't. So that's why I say go back and start with apples, definitely. Um, and Matthew C., like, it could, is a good one to add. It's a little expensive. These are actually fairly reasonable. I think that these are like around $16, and you can use them for multiple children. As you get into fractions, I think it's maybe 30 something dollars. I'm not sure. The only thing I don't like about it is once you get to fractions, is he apparently has a lot of faith in your children because he puts your turn to play and on the same page you'll see I have little post-its and things on here he puts the answers right next to it so the kids either have to be really diligent about not looking which is almost impossible or um, or or you have to do something about it uh, Saxon and Life of Fred together you might could the problem I have with that is when I taught Saxon I felt very much like you had to do all 30 problems so if you can pull yourself away from that doing all 30 problems and maybe just the little parts that's the review um, at the top or the few things that's about that topic and not do all those problems, then I think you'd be okay. You you will overwhelm your child probably by doing two math programs if you're doing the whole Saxon program. But it is spiral and Life of Fred is kind of spiral because he goes back and forth on topics. That's why I say it's hard to jump in in the middle with him unless you're in the upper levels because it's just so... Um, he'll mention something in apples and by the time you get to goldfish he's going back to it I noticed him, we, my youngest started in goldfish today um, like this week and he keeps reviewing back to things earlier oh sorry I got a little thing popped up okay so how did I supplement how do I supplement besides Matthew C with my youngest we started doing games and a lot of people hmm just mention that without Matthew C they might not score well um, you know when I started when I tested my kids after Life of Fred. We did not have any Matthew C at that point. Um, they did Life of, Life of Fred. They'd done a little bit of Horizons again, and then they did Life of Fred. And when they tested, they were both uh, above their grade level. I don't remember exactly how far above. Um, my oldest, who was at the point, he'd been taking the ACT. We start ours about seventh or eighth grade taking the ACTs, trying to get them out of the... Um, nervousness of taking it you know and kind of get how it feels so he had been taking the ACT a few times and he took the ACT after Life of Fred and his math went up I think five or six points so I feel like it is a really good program and I love the program but it is really hard to back off from your traditional thinking of how math should be taught and go with it everybody that has that I have talked to who said kids that go, went all the way through said wow this is great my kids learned a lot. I think what my kids picked up last year the most, and the reason why they scored so high, was not because they were studying the same traditional topics, 
um, okay, I'll talk to you about that in a minute, um, is because what Fred teaches you is the, not so much the procedural, but the um, problem solving, how, everything's a word problem with Fred. So that was when I was teaching a big problem I had with kids. They could not do word problems. They were so used to doing, you know, two times three equals six. that They couldn't see how, well, if you have two people and you, whatever, do this, you get six. They couldn't, they couldn't come up with a, they couldn't solve a word problem. And another thing, they had a huge problem with fractions. And that's another thing I like about both Matthew C. and Life of Fred is that they do not introduce fractions until later when the kids have gotten through math, subtraction, multiplication, and the division. And then they introduce it more as, at least Life of Fred does, I haven't really gotten into it deeply in Matthew C. yet, as division is fractions. So the same thing. They're just written differently. Um, so that is one of the things, that, because I know that when I was teaching school in the spring, traditional school setting, we had a hard time with kids understanding fractions. I think what happens is they get a little bit of fractions in first grade, a little bit of fractions here, a little bit of fractions here, and they don't get a full grasp of fractions. So by the time they got to algebra, they couldn't do fractions to save their life. When I started saying multiply fractions, they would freak out. They, I don't understand how it gets smaller, Miss McVeigh, you know, all this stuff. It was crazy. And they could not do simple fractions. You know, on Pi Day, we I said you have to do a pie. And if you're in algebra, they had to come up with recipes and they had to divide that recipe in half or multiply it by two or and all this stuff was involving fractions and it was just so difficult for these kids because they could not grasp fractions and i really think it's because the traditional way of teaching it is just little spurts of fractions whereas when you're looking at matthew c or life of fred it's a whole fraction thing you don't talk about it very much in the beginning other than simple things like what is half of this um so when you get to that it's a little easier for the kids yeah, Saxon is spiral. So is Life of Fred. So that's good. That's why I like Matthew C. and Life of Fred together is because Matthew C. is not spiral. So it's teaching us the same concept over and over. But Fred is going back and forth in the spiral. Um, about the ACT. My son, like I said, started taking his seventh grade. He's a junior now. And the reason why we started taking that is because as a teacher, I spent a lot of time with seniors. I was a senior advisor and trying to get my kids... Um, my students, sorry, not my actual kids, my students to do well in ACT, and they had a really hard time with that. And so I started suggesting that they do the ACT in seventh grade or at the end of the seventh grade so that they could start getting practice because a lot of times the kids freak out and they don't do well on it just simply because they can't, they just, they can't get past it. It's a big test and it's an important test. So we did that in seventh grade and I think he's passed all the fear of that. He doesn't stress out about going into it anymore. And then we've started working on just certain things. Uh, and now his issue is just timing. He tries to get, yeah, the actual test, not practice books. Practice books, when it comes to a kid, that means nothing to them. I mean, it really does. And my son could do practice books all day. It wouldn't bother him because uh, he doesn't take it seriously. But actually being in the test area, that's stressful. So if we can get beyond that stress of sitting in this room for four hours while somebody's timing you and is completely silent, then you can do much better. Um, and that's what with him has helped a lot is if we, he's taken it so he's not stressed about it now. So now that he's a junior and we're really looking at just the scores at this point, not, not so much the stress of it, he can concentrate. Like right now he's about to take the ACT in April and he's concentrating on timing. Because last time he did run out of time. Because he said, I, was, I think I knew a lot of the answers. I just didn't have time to fill them all in. So that's what we're working on there. But, you know, I, I saw a marked improvement on his ACT after he did Life of Fred. And I'm not sure if it was be, what the reasoning was. But I think a lot of it was if he did not know a topic or concept, he could kind of figure it out. Yeah, that's just what we do. I mean, some people say no testing, no testing. And I don't test in homeschool hardly at all. Um Glad. Thank you. Uh, great. Oh, enjoy work. <laughs> um, so that's, you know, that's just what we've done with him because I, I just felt that. And then we're going to do that with my daughters too. It's just, it's just, it's, it's a stressful test. And, and it's hard to sit there for four hours and not get bored and then lose your train of thought. And I think that's what happens at the end. The last test doesn't get as much because you're so bored. I'm glad you think so. Okay, so other things we've done to make math fun, because actually the topic of math is fun. <laughs> I don't want to talk too much about math being fun. But my daughter loves Life of Fred. And this is the child that I said was on the floor having breakdowns. 
yesterday, not yesterday, last week, she was, or maybe a week before, she was, uh, she's in the Brave Kids scope group, and she was watching a scope, and when the little girl had just finished her Saxon math, and her mother allowed her to take her workbook outside and destroy it, because it was the end of the year, and she was done with it, and she was saying on there, I hate math, and my daughter's, I don't know, drawing or something, or doing something, and she looks up, and she says, hmm, I love math, so this is the kid who was on the floor crying, is now saying, hmm, I love math. Um, and she told me that, I said, I can't believe you just said that. And she said, well, math is fun. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, she loves math. But some of the things we've started doing, and uh, I got a lot of these ideas from um, the Facebook page. Oh, shoot, I can't remember. Something like Big Juicy Conversations About Math. Um, Casey, I can't remember last time, but she, um, she moderates that. And it's a really good group if you want to talk about math. But um, maybe way more than you can handle at one time. I know I have to back off from it some because there's so many great concepts I can't put them all in. Yeah, really, it was. But they talked about games. So I was going to show you a few of these games, and they've been mentioned in other scopes, so I won't mention them much. But we started playing things like My Math Dice, uh, Super Genius. They have addition, subtraction, and multiplication levels. Sleeping Queens for the younger. Uh, some Swamp I have... Several people mentioned some swap, swamp. And this is kind of funny. When we were in Colonial Williamsburg in October, we picked up Shut the Box. Uh, mostly because mostly my husband just thought that would be fun. And it's a great math game. <laughs> we add the subtraction element to it. It's supposed to just be addition, uh, but we add the subtraction element to it. And then this is one of my new favorite games. And I'm going to blog about this in the next week or two. But this is a uh, color cue. And it's like, oh, no. Well, I, they, they, you can buy them. Or, you know, you just make up your own. Just put cards with numbers on them. You can do that. Uh, color cue. I love Sudoku. So this is a, a fun game where we can all work together and use colors instead of numbers, which is hard for me because I'm used to doing numbers. Uh, so I actually got some numbers to put on it. But this is a great math strategy game. Um Oh, I forgot to say, I don't know if I said this, had the chocolate. That's, I'm going to blog about all these things there so you can, you can look there. And then here's another great thing I started doing. This was in the beginning when um, Fridays we don't do regular math. Fridays are Friday fun days. So we just do games on those days. But the games I just mentioned are day, games we do through the week. So we, I started finding this. And let me find her card. All right. This is, and I don't know how you pronounce her name. But she does purse. Purposeful Play Busy Bags, and this is her website, and she comes up with Busy Bags, and I started buying them because I thought this would be fun, so let me just show you a couple of them. Like, she'll put things like this in there, a little hexagon, and it's got all sorts of different geometrical, and she'll put Play-Doh in there, and she'll put toothpicks in there, and the kids can start building geometry, so it's a fun way for them to get hands on and to do something. These are the youngers, and then they're still learning math. Uh, this is my one of my daughter's favorites because it has princesses and fairies. Oh, I love. We love playing games. We've become game addicts. Um, Zeus on the loose, one of our favorites right now. They play it all the time. But this comes with little fairies and little princesses, and of course, this is for your youngers, and it has like. Different scenes. So I found her favorite was the castle scene. And then it has a little envelope in here. And it has fairy tale story problems. So it'll have a word problem in here that tells you something about how many fairies. Let's say this one, one day, three little fairy girls went into their house. Then they called four of their fairy tale friends. How many girls in the house now? So what she likes to do is set up the set it up, the princes or the fairies or whatever. And then she sets up the word problem, and she works it out. But she likes to add the element of, I'm going to call Brave Rider to it, and she writes a story. So she sits down and writes a story. So we get a little a little writing, a little free write there, and a little math on one. But it's helping to solve story problems. Um, oh, here's another great way, easy way. You can easily make these, but she did them for me. Um, you can get these things. My husband has these at work. Um, they're tongue depressors at work, but I don't know what. I guess they're just big craft sticks. And you can write on the end of them an equation. You can say 4 plus 5. You can do multiplication. You can do subtraction, division, whatever you want to. And then you can get little envelopes. 
put a number on them, and then they have to put them in the right thing. Yeah, these are great. Any game you can find where you take it out of the workbook, worksheet, traditional setting, the kids are inspired by it. When I taught school, I would try to take it out of that. It's hard to do that because you're on 180 days and you don't ever get 180 days because there's always going to be an assembly or a field trip or something that messes that up. But you, if you could try to, like when we did graphing, I would make waffles and they would graph with their syrup. And their, um, if you can do that, it makes it more fun and I think it sticks with them. And they don't even realize they're learning. And that's the thing about these games is these are games that they play on their own versus games that we do together as a family. And it's also brought a very big element of um, family life with us because now they're, we're playing games all the time instead of sitting in front of TV. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, graph with waffles, fun, fun stuff. <laughs> um, we, you know, it used to be that we'd all sit down and watch a TV show, which, uh, which is a fine, you know. One of our favorite shows right now is big, um, the Brain Games. The kids love that, and my husband loves that. But if you can sit down and play a game, then you're spending family time, and you're also, um, you're also spending time learning, and they don't even realize they're learning. Okay, so that's pretty much, I think, everything I was going to mention. Everything that I'm talked about is going to be on the blog. But if you have any questions uh, about Life of Fred or Matthew C. Um, or the ACT or anything, feel free to jump in. If not, I will let you guys go about your Saturday morning. Mine's going to involve doing laundry. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll hold that up again. It's pretty new. Um, the Brave Writer, the Brave Scopes group has really inspired me to write down some thoughts. The, uh, when we periscope so much, I realized I would miss something or I want to say something or I'd want to link to something. Oh, thanks. Well, you know, you have to hide your chocolate or they'll eat it. Uh, now that I'm on a diet, I have to hide my special chocolate so they can't get into it. Um, yeah. But I found that I needed, I needed that space to put stuff in there so that I didn't forget it and, and people can look at it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, well, if there's no more questions, then I will leave you with this lovely picture of Life of Fred here. Oh, no, see, that's the worst, when they find your stash, and then they eat it, and then you go for it, and there's nothing there. It's depressing. You guys have a great Saturday morning. You're very welcome.